This is Tech Tuesday, where we shine the spotlight on a trending theme in the world of technology and gain a better understanding of where trends are leading in the world of tech investment. This is Tech Tuesday, presented by the Canadian Securities Exchange. Thank you to everyone for joining us live for this week's edition of Tech Tuesday. Today, we'll be talking about ag tech, farming and trees. Sponsored by the CSE, we are pleased to have two companies. The first is Spornado with the CEO, Christine White. The second is with Israel Talpaz and Seatree. He's the co-founder and CEO. I'm this week's host, and our guest moderator will be none other than Mark Francis. Our objective in running Tech Tuesday is twofold. The first is to for companies to gain visibility and traction on an accessible platform. The second is to inform market participants as to the types of companies that are involved in the space. For you, the attendees, we do ask that you share any ideas, leads, feedbacks, and comments with our presenters. Please let them know if you have any potential strategic relationships, some housekeeping matters. This presentation is for information purposes only. Uh, this is not an opportunity for solicitation. We do not make any representations about these companies. If you're interested in the investor pitch deck, please do reach out to them. Each of these companies will have five minutes to present, after which time there will be a Q&A which we proudly call the Inquisition. Now, let's talk about Spornado and, of course, Christine White. Christine was at the forefront of indoor sampling and remediation of fungal contamination for over 20 years. Her experience in managing large business units and national technical teams at environmental engineering firms has given her the leadership abilities to guide Spornado from a small one season project into the company we have today. Without further ado, Christine. Hi, my name is Christine White and I'm the CEO and a founder of Spornado, an early alert system for crop disease that is changing the way farmers use fungicides. Globally, fungal diseases cost the ag industry a ton of money. 13 billion are spent on fungicides each year and there are still 60 billion lost to fungal disease. Yet growers don't know when disease is in their fields until they see it and it's too late. And because fungicides must be used preventatively, timing is everything. So how are spray decisions currently being made? Well, it's not as data driven as it could be. There's a lot of guesswork experience, weather modeling, and actually scouting for disease is really all that's currently available. And this guesswork can result in ineffective and unnecessary spraying. It has also led to diseases becoming more and more resistant to fungicides, but that can all be changed with more targeted use. And that's where Spornado comes in. Our solution is easy to use and affordable. It's an air sampler that is powered only by wind. It holds a cassette, that collects airborne fungal disease. And that cassette is then couriered to a local partner lab for highly sensitive DNA analysis. Results are reported back to the farmer via text or email within 24 hours. And the same equipment can be used on any crop, any fungal disease, only the test in the lab needs to change. We've also validated infield tests using portable equipment. And unique to Spornado, we can also test for pesticide resistance. So in a nutshell, Spornado detects plant disease in the air long before they affect crops, removing guesswork and allowing farmers to spray more precisely, which can increase yields and reduce pesticide use, which is beneficial for both the farmer's bottom line and our environment. We create value for users when sprays and crops are saved. We have evolved to a subscription-based model, ranging from four to $16 an acre, depending on the crop and the disease, and giving at least a two to five times ROI when saving just one spray a season. And that doesn't even account for the saved yield. So while virtually any farmer that sprays can be our customer, initial demand has been in crops with high disease pressure, like potato and wheat, as well as growers struggling with resistance to pesticides and loss of chemistry, such as grapes and berries. In terms of traction, we are heading into our fourth season of commercialization, and we have gone from working in one crop to 10, and customer retention is around 95%. We will have this year around 500 samplers deployed. We have filed a PCT patent in several jurisdictions internationally, 
And with the support of our seed round investors, we're expanding globally. We look forward to the day every form farmer across the globe can make data-driven fungicide decisions to present, prevent disease more sustainably while producing the much needed crops to feed us all. And Spornado is making us a reality. Thank you. Thank you for that, Christine. And now we move on to our second presenter, a little bit further away than Toronto, um, Israel Talpaz. He's the co-founder and CEO of SeaTree. He's a former ranking government official serving for more than 30 years in the Israeli government establishment. A leader and a highly skilled strategist, expert in constructing and applying operations, technology, and analytical processes to get to the higher ground. Uh, while serving, was active in the international arena, running complex campaigns in specialized domains of expertise and coping with different cultures and environments. Over to you, Israel. Hello, everybody. My name is Israel Talpaz. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Citri. Citri is a four and a half year old Israeli startup uh, company that specializes in trees. We optimize the growth of trees, tree health, fruit production by trees, and the carbon sequestration uh, conducted by trees worldwide. Our, our goal is to utilize intelligence, which is process data, uh, to help the growers optimize their production of, of trees. So Citri was founded in 2017. We have today uh, over 100 employees. We work in five countries, in the US, in Brazil, in Mexico, South Africa, and Greece. Uh, we work on five different tree crops, covering over 100 million trees, uh, 900,000 acres that we manage over time. So what do we do? We focus in four specific uh, areas. Uh, involving the farming of trees. One is improving tree health. The second is enhancing farming efficiency. The third is optimizing fruit production. And fourth is maintaining the sustainability and the transparency of the farming actions. These four are the pillars of what we do. How do we do it? We fly drones and aerial uh, planes uh, to collect aerial imagery as well as satellite imagery and ground level imagery. All of these uh, compile the data that we utilize to uh, enhance our uh, analysis. It's a campaign which is very closely orchestrated and is the specifics are determined by the specific crop and the specific needs of the farmers. On general, we, we would fly four to six times over every tree uh, uh, per year, uh, plus satellites on a weekly basis. Our secret sauce is the analysis. And here we use a unique combination of machine learning, computer vision capabilities compiled together with what we call HI, human intelligence, agronomists that teach our machines what is important and what is needed to monitor. Here is the basic uh, dashboard at the farm level uh, that the growers uh, access. What you're seeing here on the left-hand side, uh, you're seeing the statistics of the groves, how many trees they have. Uh, you have here 334,349 healthy trees that are scored. Green is good, uh, orange and red is bad, and, and uh Gray and black is, is non-producing at all. See how many non-producing trees you have in a farm. Each block here, uh, by the way, is about 50 acres. So the total here is about 1,000 acres. Zooming in from that dashboard view, the farmer can go into the grove level and eventually see every single tree. As you can see here, you see uh, the trees uh, scored, and the dots represent the digital entity of a tree. When you click on a dot, you you see the tree's name, uh, as you can see here on the top left-hand side. This is the tree's file 
you could call it the social security file or the health file of the tree. Every tree is a digital entity and, and has a digital twin in our database. And all of the trees are monitored over time and you can see the history and the progression of the trees as we uh, go forward. Of course, it goes down to the tree level and all the way up to the farm and regional level. This way, uh, we were able to direct the farmers to treat the weak trees and, and as well learn from the, the strong trees and know what is working right and what is not. Another important parameter are the tree sizes. Size here matters. And here you have a height map of the trees. We measure the heights of every single tree. This is important for sunlight management. It's important for irrigation. It's important for crop protection, for spraying. You should, you do not, you should not spray every tree the same amount as it's done today. We are now creating variable rate spraying maps uh, based on our measurements and also on our findings regarding diseases and health issues. This, this uh, demonstrates the calibration of, of the spraying capability. We can save farmers between 20 to 70% on the amount of chemicals that they use. It's a huge item of their budget, and we, we are able to optimize this as we go uh, forward. We do the same with irrigation and the same uh, with other actions in farming. The ROI that the farmers get from our service is between two times to 10 times our cost per year. Two times to 10 times our cost per year. Our cost per year is about $40 per acre a year. Here's another capability that we have, a fruit assessment capability. This means that we're able to count the amount of fruit that is on the trees uh, during the growing season, months before harvest time. This is done for numerous reasons, mainly uh, forecasting the yield. The farmers then go and sell uh, the yield that they have before actually picking it. They get better prices, better leverage, and so on. But they also learn where the good areas are in the grove, the weak areas, and can learn from that and optimize next year accordingly. Now, recently, we've added another capability to our uh, service, and that is the carbon side of, of trees. Trees are very important in our uh, fight against climate change. They capture carbon from the air and with the photosynthesis uh, process. And we know how to measure this. Thus, we are creating carbon forestry uh, stocks of, uh, based on trees, our tree measurements, and we're doing this for numerous developers of uh, reforestation uh, in the U.S. and in Europe. So that, that is basically uh, my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. And now we're going to bring everyone back to the main stage for the part we like to call the Inquisition. As I mentioned earlier, our guest uh, moderator is Mr. Mark Francis, and he will be leading. So over to you, Mark. Thank you very much. Excellent presentations, Christine and Israel, and uh, I learned something. That's terrific, and I focus a, a fair bit on the ag space. Uh, by the way, one of my uh, one of the best investments I didn't make was actually in an ag data company that launched out of Calgary and ended up getting bought out. So, definitely hot space. Interestingly, you each launched at about the same time, maybe a little after uh, that company launched. So there's a wave of, of this uh, AI and, and, uh, and smart farming coming. And questions, questions. So first, let's talk about a mistake you made and what you did to correct it. Christine and then Israel. Oh, how to choose. <laughs> um, probably one of the most significant mistakes we made early on which we corrected is um, initially we were selling the hardware separately and then selling the lab analysis. Um, and that had a lot of limitations. We found out very quickly because, you know, people wouldn't use the sampler as it was intended and then wonder why, oh, you know, it didn't work or people would, you know, send it to labs that didn't have um, 
the experience to do the analysis um, in the way that it has to be done. Um, so we learned that quickly and we pulled back. And what we did is we evolved to a subscription based model. So now the farmer just pays one fee. And with that, they get the use of the sampler for the season. They get the consumable cassettes and they get the um, lab analysis with a through rather a licensed partner lab of ours. Um, so that, you know, gives us that quality control that's really necessary. And it also, um, we retain the rights to the data, which is important as well. So uh, my mistake uh, that I chose, I, and again, I have a lot of uh, mistakes as well. Uh, I would say that we started to, uh, to raise too much money. We tried to raise too much money. Uh, we went for too much. And um, the problem was that that uh, that triggered um, a whole process of evaluation and um, size of the company, and it, it all connected together and and put us too much pressure on us in the beginning. I would recommend uh, now doing it again starting as lean and small as possible and and working from there upwards and not trying to go for uh, too big of a chunk too fast. Interesting comment because uh, you're right. At a certain point, you then have to scale, but at the beginning, it can definitely uh, create some issues. And uh, Christine, appreciate the wisdom in your comment. You, you needed to keep control over the perceived quality of your service. And when people could only buy, could buy bits and pieces, then they weren't getting the quality that you knew you could deliver. So good change, good change there. So which crops uh, and where are you most, most active geographically, Israel and then Christine? So our number one crop is the citrus field, citrus in Brazil. Uh, we focused um, on citrus trees and citrus, I mean, all types of citrus, uh, oranges for orange juice, lemons, uh, fresh fruit, uh, mandarins, and so on. Uh, there are, we, we chose citrus because there are major diseases and problems uh, in growing these, uh, these crops on the one hand. And on the other hand, they're very valuable for mankind, vitamin C and, and so on. So we wanted to try to help farmers um, detect diseases and problems as soon as possible. Dealing with problems when they're young is cheaper and way more effective. And that is the basic idea behind our detection capabilities. And that pushed us towards the citrus field and especially in Brazil, which are number one in the world uh, in citrus. In, in the production of citrus. Uh, we went there and we were uh, fortunate to, to succeed there with the biggest grower in the world that we cover now for the third year. So where we got our start is also where we um, have most of our uh, clients in and that's in potato. Late blight and potato, a lot of people are actually even familiar with this disease as it caused the potato famine back in the mid-1800s. It's a devastating disease. Um, Seven billion dollars is spent annually trying to fight it. So it's um, a disease that really lends well to spornado and early detection because, again, these, these fungicides have to be used before the disease is visible for them really to work well. So... We're, we're, we got our start in potato in Canada. We've uh, branched across the country uh, in the U.S. And we also are working in Europe, in the U.K. Okay, so let's expand a little bit more on the total crops you cover and the uh, the next countries you're, you're going to focus on. So, uh, Christine, then Israel. Yeah, so we're at various stages of development in at least uh, probably half a dozen crops now. So we um, still have a focus on specialty crops. So grapes, berries, tomato, um, but we've also moved into row crops. So we're working now in wheat, canola, um, corn, um, et cetera. 
uh, again, a North American focus, but we also have um, trials going on in Europe. And thanks to our one of our seed investors, we're expanding um, into Asia with a focus on Japan. So we now uh, focus on five crops and growing. Uh, we've added almonds, uh, pistachios, uh, working now on olives, last uh, stages of implementing a, our solution for olives, uh, hazelnuts, and uh, and growing on the farming uh, track. It takes us about three months to add a new crop. Uh, and in a separate track, we're in the reforestation uh, industry where they plant trees, mainly oak trees, uh, to sequester carbon from the air. And we do the measurements there and the optimization of the growth uh, there. So we've uh, specialized now in identifying, classifying, and detecting problems with oak trees as well. Uh, the the uh, countries are Mexico now, as well as the US, uh, Florida, California, and Mississippi, um, and uh, now South Africa and the southern part of Europe. Very good. So what I really appreciate is that each of you started in one crop and focused really clearly, gained penetration, understood it, and then branched out. But you still also have some geographic focus. You're not trying to boil the ocean, I think, is the expression. You're, you're really you're focused and that, that's very important. Uh, but you will have competitors, either direct or indirect. And so talk a little bit about your competition as well, Israel and Christine. Yes, we, we have two types of competitors. We have direct competitors. Those are competitors that are that do things that are very similar to what we do, like aerial imagery uh, companies. They are There are companies that do, uh, that fly planes or drones and, and uh, create aerial imagery and, and analyze them at, at a certain way. Uh, but they, they're offering, and that's the big difference between us and them, is that their offering is just aerial imagery. And it, it is not a full comprehensive uh, package for the farmers. The farmers need uh, aerial imagery. They need ground level uh, uh, imagery. Uh, and they actually don't need the imagery. They need the insights that are derived from the imagery. And we focus on that, on that side, the actionability of it. And to do that, you need all of those capabilities. So our, our direct competitors are imagery type uh, companies. There are indirect uh, competitors, those that create IoT sensors uh, and provide other forms of data for farmers. Uh, and they compete on the budget that the farmer has for, for data. And that, that's why they compete with us, actually. But... It's, it's a different uh, type. I think that the farmers are going for an end-to-end -end comprehensive solution, and we hope to be the one. Yeah, I like that point that Israel made, is that there's definitely um, competition for budget for disease prediction. Um, in terms of our direct competitors, you know, actually doing spore sampling and giving early detection to disease, we don't have a lot of them um, globally. They are, and the ones that are there, there's, they're very expensive. Um, some of them are re more researcher based and um, very complex to use. Uh, so we have the advantage over the few farm based models that are coming out in that we, we're using just qPCR DNA technology. It's really well established, it's really straightforward. Um, it can be done all over the world. And so we can scale really quickly. So we do have that advantage. And then in terms of the indirect, um, they would sometimes include imagery um, uh, companies that Israel described uh, that will fly over and look for disease. Unfortunately, with fungal disease, that again is going to be too late because we need to use these chemicals preventatively. And there's some indirect competition with other predictive analysis companies. So companies that are taking a whole bunch of weather data, previous information on disease, and trying to predict when the disease is there. Um, 
But with that, they, they still don't know when the spores are there. So we're actually starting some um, collaboration with these companies to provide, um, you know, a really holistic answer in terms of when the disease is going to strike. That's very interesting. That was how AccuWeather, I think, I think 20 and 30 years ago, had the best track record on weather forecasting. And they, they simply used historical data and matched things up and made predictions based on historical patterns. Uh, so that's interesting that, that that is being applied as well in your spaces. Uh, that's really good. You, you both are starting to, you know, you've got real traction. Uh, and Israel, we know you have 100 employees. Uh, Christine, how many do you have now? Oh, we're just a small team of six. Six, okay, but you're you're growing. Yeah. And uh, but the only real way to protect your IP, uh, is, well, there are two ways uh, in in this world where competitors, both unknowingly and knowingly, infringe or outright violate uh, IP, is to become the biggest user of it, and and therefore to accelerate your market penetration as well as to continuously improve your existing IP. So. Talk a bit more about what you're doing in that regard, Israel and Christine. Yes, I, I would say we have um, three types of IP. And the first type are the uh, techniques and uh, um, I would say methods that we use. Uh, and, and it's a unique one and uh, it's the easiest to lose uh, in terms of uh, of IP, uh, but it's it's important and it's getting out there. And we know that that we cannot rely on that on keeping that secret there. The second is uh, specific algorithms and uh, uh, capabilities that we were able to patent them, and we have uh, quite a few of those, and they're the next line to lose as well. Uh, they can be replaced. It's harder, but uh, they they will be uh, the the competitors will find ways to to manage with that. The best IP that we have, and here I'm not worried at all. And you can tell this to anybody. Okay, uh, this is the data that that we have regarding the trees themselves. This is labeled data, very accurate data that we've processed. We have over a hundred million trees now, and we're, as you said, Mark, we're trying to grow now as fast as we can to get more under our management, label them, assess them, and and get them into our system because this is something really, really hard to copy. You can't. You need to do the groundwork. You need to do the data collection, uh, the analysis, the training, and it takes time. There's no way around it. No way around it. Uh, so we want to enhance on on the amount of trees under our management that are processed uh, by our system for now years, uh, get to a billion uh, trees as fast as we can and have them over time. And then we're we're stuck in very, very well. Yeah, I mean, for us, uh, the number of units out there really does help, you know, with protection of our IP. Which RP is generally the the set membrane and the methods of um, uh, um, detection, but you know the more it's inexpensive technology. So we have a lot of data points out there already, and the more we have, it's laying the groundwork for us for expansion. And one one of the things that we've started early on and have continued through the different crops in terms of accelerating this expansion is when we get into a new crop, we always um, get into it, not just on our own, but through the top researchers in that crop, whether they're academic or government, um, and also through the crop boards, through the growers. So, you know, we, we get into the crop when there's a need presented to us, not just when we did some market research, you know, and, and said, hey, there's, you know, uh, 10 million acres of corn, we should go for that. You know, we, we really get into a new crop when the demand comes to us. And so that, that does a lot of things. It helps us um, accelerate quicker, but it also gives us more unbiased support, you know, from, from unbiased researchers. So that's really helped us um, accelerate. And then, of course, you touch on an important part of IP is always evolving. 
Um, we joke that this is just Spornado 1.0. We are all already well underway developing Spornado 2.0, you know, real-time monitoring in the field um, and moving that technology forward. But the nice thing is, is what we're doing now and what we've invested in, it's always going to have a use, you know, whether it's somewhere else in the world geographically or um, because it is low cost in, in crops that, you know, have a, uh, a lower ROI. So that's what we've uh, kind of done. Very good. Getting to the, the penultimate question. Are you looking for more capital, Christine and Israel? We will be, yes. In around 12 months, um, we will be looking for our Series A investment round. Of how much, can you say? Um, that's still to be determined, probably around $5 million. Yes, so uh, we, we are looking for uh, another round right now. We're in the midst of, uh, of a round. This is our C round. Uh, and we are uh, looking for $30 million uh, uh, to take us uh, two years ahead. And uh, we've raised to date $45 million in, in three rounds. Uh, last round was uh, led by uh, the World Bank, the, the IFC, as well as uh, Netafim, the drip irrigation company, and Kubota, the Japanese machinery company. And we're looking for a combination of financial investors as well as strategic uh, to work together to transform farming of, of trees uh, worldwide. So, yeah, to, to your question, we're always looking for money. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. And Thank you. the final question, what is your biggest challenge? Israel, Christine. Okay. I, I think by far the biggest challenge that we have is not regarding our data, actually, it's the implementation of the farmers. We really need to affect their behavior, their day-to-day -day behavior, as well as their strategic behavior, and really transform uh, the way that they farm. Because to use our data, it, they need to really act differently and, and they want to use it, but they need means to, to do that. So drip irrigation, for instance, uh, spraying, variable rate spraying, different techniques and, and so on. And we are working with our, our partners to help them do that. We, we understood that it's not being good enough with the data. It's being, it's being able to help them implement. And I believe that in, in uh, a few years time, we're going to see this full uh, transformation. We're going to look back and see that farming, tree farming has really changed uh, totally. And, and that, that's our goal and that's our vision. So I would say our biggest challenge is deciding where to grow smartly. Every week we're getting um, contacted from different crops, um, different countries globally wanting to use Spornado, wanting us to, um, you know, uh, develop tests for their disease and their crop because fungal diseases, they impact virtually every crop. Um, so, yeah, I think that's our biggest challenge is um, taking our, our limited personnel and focusing on where the best place to grow next is, whether that's a crop um, decision or a geographic decision. Very good. Thank you, both of you. Israel Talpaz, Sea Tree, and Christine White, Spornato. An excellent discussion and all the best in building your businesses. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you to our presenters, Christine White, CEO of Spornado, and Israel Talpaz, CEO and co founder of Sea Tree. Thank you to all the people that have worked behind the scenes. And Neil Mall, James Black, uh, Melissa Robertson, and of course, from behind the scenes to in front, <laughs> Mark Francis. Lastly, thank you to our attendees for taking a slice out of your day to spend time with us and learn about these companies on Tech Tuesday. Go to these companies' website if you want to learn more about their projects. If you, again, if you have any leads or ideas or connections for them, reach out, let them know. Next week, 
please make sure you return for Tech Tuesday. It'll be another private company showcase. I've been your host, Barrington Miller, and may you have continued success in your next adventure.